It's almost time for the 2024 season to start here in the UK and we've got a lot of information coming from various different parks including some information from around the world. Okay so starting close to home we've got a fan favourite at Alton Towers we've got Nemesis. Now just the other week the park announced that they have begun testing, the BBC were there, they were filming. The good news is from what we can tell the roar is still there. A lot of people, myself included, were very concerned that the sand in the track was going to have a huge impact on it but it does sound like we're going to have that iconic Nemesis roar. So we've seen the trains running, uh, they're obviously got thousands of cycles to do before that ride is signed off and ready for people to get on it but fingers crossed it is ready for opening day uh, there's still a ton of work going on around the site we've seen stuff in the queue line speakers getting put in all over the place some permanent lighting which is kind of novel for alton towers uh, there's containers that are ripped and it looks like one of those might be a shop i suspect similar to what you get on wicker man halfway around the queue where you can grab a drink or you know poncho but yeah, that ride is making fantastic progress and hopefully set to be open on opening day. Let's stay with Alton Towers. There's two other rides that some information has come out on. The first one is some positive news and that is that the Wicker Man appears to have flame effects back up and running. Now for the last couple of years, the screen flames have been there, but real actual flames have not. Uh, but some advertising stuff from the park and some footage from other people have shown that these flames are currently operational so fingers crossed that's testing that is all going well and we will have Big Bob back to his full state when it opens in March. The second one is Galactica. I did a whole video on Galactica because it check that out up there. Um, that's probably going to be the black sheep off Forbidden Valley this year. Everything else is getting spruced up. Everything's looking fantastic. Everything's black and red. And then Galactica's run down and blue. Now, I did say in that video, I don't think anything's going to happen this year. The, the park could do far too much elsewhere. That seems to be the case. There's nobody seen any visual cues that imply that they have actually done any work on Galactica. Uh, they are repairing the sign. Obviously, that was blown down in a recent storm. Um, but it'll be interesting to see if anything has happened. I know people, myself included, were hoping even just for a jet wash because it does look filthy. Uh, but I suspect we're going to return to Galactica this year with stickers peeling off the wall, the screens in the station not working, and a filthy track. Future me here, uh, well, no future to you, future to me. Recording this the day after the rest of this because Alton Towers have just announced some new experiences for 2024. Uh, I've been critical in the past of the park that they haven't kept up with the others when they've got behind the scenes attractions. Um, Alton Towers have now today announced that they are going to do a walk Oblivion and walk Wicker Man experience. In both cases you get to walk to the top of the lift hill. It also includes one fast track on the ride. Now, they've said Oblivion is from £80 and Wicker Man is from £65. So I'm curious how that pricing varies. Um, it will be select dates, as you'd expect. Um, but I'm just comparing this to Blackpool when I did Walk the Woody. It was the same price no matter which date you chose. Uh, so I'm hoping that doesn't go too much higher than the £80 and the £65. Um, definitely something that appeals to me. If I can find a date that uh, lines up, I will be there. I'm curious what your thoughts are on this. Do you? Uh, you interested in this? Do you want to see them do this on any other rides? Not sure they can. You can't really walk Nemesis or Rita or, or 13. Yeah, these are probably the only two they could do. Um, maybe walk up the Smiler lift hill? Maybe? Maybe take you up in the lift on the vertical drop? I don't know. Uh, it's great to see. Two new experiences and for enthusiasts, you know, that, that kind of geeky behind the scenes and kind of getting those views is, is definitely fantastic. So. Thumbs up to Alton Towers, well done. Then moving over to Drayton Manor, uh, obviously we've got two rides this year from them. First one is Shockwave that is not going to be called Shockwave, they haven't told us what it's going to be called, and it is getting the new sit down trains. Now from what I've seen online, nobody seems to have seen these trains yet, uh, we don't know if there's any retheming going on, obviously the station was recently painted when that whole area was done, um, and we don't know what that name is going to be. The second thing is their new lift and launch coaster. Now, again, they've kind of not said a huge amount about this. It's gone vertical. There's a lot of construction already happened. They do seem to be throwing it together at quite a pace. Um, when it was in the car park, people spotted that it said spinning coaster on some of the supports. 
Uh, they seem to have claimed that's not true, but the question is why would you say that if it's not? So uh, maybe they're just hoping that we didn't <laughs> didn't spot it and they're gonna try and surprise us, uh, or at least surprise the general public because enthusiasts have seen this already. Uh, one thing that Sean Evans over at Lift Hill and Thrills did spot from some aerial footage is that there is a switch track. Now, it's pretty unusual for this sort of thing. I mean, typically you would have a switch track on the more thrilling coasters where you know you might have a backward spike and then you come in at the switch track. You do get it in other cases, uh, 13 in Alton Towers is one of those examples. You do have the switch track when you do the backward section and then return back into the station. So I'm wondering if that implies that this ride is going to have a backward section. And moving on to my local park, I always say local, but it's three hours away. My nearest park, uh, Blackpool. Uh, one of my favourites, you probably all know that from my videos. Uh, first of all, we have had the retracking work done on the big one. So um, I know Scott from Your Experience Guide filmed recently them putting in all the sections. So that, as far as I'm aware, all the sections are now in place. Obviously there's still a lot of work to do, get the scaffolding down before trains can run. But the good thing is if that is done now at late January and the park opens in March, there's a high probability that it'll be good to go for opening weekend, which there has been a couple of years where it's missed that. So fingers crossed, the big one will be back for opening weekend. We've also seen a ton of scaffolding up around the steeplechase sign. I'm not entirely sure what that is for. If it's just getting the deep clean, if there's some work going on. The sign looked fairly modern, so I'm curious to see if there's anything happening there. We've also got, uh, in their winter maintenance, they showed some new models that I believe are gonna be part of the Ghost Train. Uh, they do have a behind the scenes tour, Ghosts and Gardens on the same day that Alton Towers opens, I will be there uh, behind the scenes, as I'm sure most of your other uh, YouTube channels will be as well. So expecting to see lots of them there. Um, they're gonna take us behind the scenes and we get to walk around the ghost train. And as I say, I suspect from what we've seen, there are some either new scenes or at least some updated scenes. Uh, so it'll be good to see those as well. And the last thing from Blackpool is, I put a video together. There's been a lot of speculation about some rides possibly on borrowed time and you know imminently being removed from the park. It doesn't appear that anything has happened, at least from the outside of the park. Nobody can see any evidence of any of the rides being removed this year. Uh, so it looks like we will have the same ride lineup this year as we did last year. I'm curious, let me know in the comments below what, uh, what parks you're most interested in. If there's any other rumors you've heard or any other information that you want to share with the other people, put that in the comments below. Um, hit that like button. I have set a ridiculous goal of trying to hit 10,000 subscribers by January next year. So uh, please help me out and hit that subscribe button as well. Now obviously the other huge piece of news in the UK this year is Thorpe Park and Hyperia. Uh, now obviously Jack Silton Stone is doing a fantastic job at documenting the uh, construction updates on that one. It is looking spectacular. We do now know that the, that first outer bank when you come out of the station is now in place, which looks like a really, really weird element to be tilted so far to the side at such low speeds coming out of the station uh, will be definitely uh, a unique experience. Similarly, at the top of one of those uh, hills, there's another outer bank section, which just looks crazy. So there's a lot of hype around this one. There's definitely some unique elements, and I know it's probably getting a lot of eyeballs from internationally, which ties into the second thing that Thorpe Park are doing, and that is all the work they're doing with their Sparkle project. Um, they are obviously painting a lot of stuff, cleaning a lot of stuff, they're redoing all the toilet blocks. Um, it's really good to see this park coming you know, back to life effectively with this new branding, etc., because I suspect it's gonna have a lot of new visitors this year, and they obviously want it to look its best. And the last park I've got in the UK is uh, up in Flamingoland. Well, down for me, because everything's down from Scotland. But most of you guys, probably up north uh, in Flamingoland. <sighs> They've not told us anything, but it is well known that they have removed large portions of the Lost River ride. Um, shout out to Flamingo Picks for all the images that they've been putting up on, on Facebook. Uh, I'll put a couple of those in just now. But effectively, they have been removing the drop there's some work going on in the lift hill. The kind of building that goes around at the top of the lift hill uh, has been removed. What's interesting is they seem to be doing it in a very controlled fashion and they're stacking all the pieces up. Makes a, There's still no confirmation if this is a removal or a refurbishment or a modification in any shape or form. The fact that they've not just come in with giant bulldozers and knocked the damn thing down does make me think they're doing something to it. Now, Again, if the park opens in a couple of months, 
I don't think it'll be. I don't think it'll be open for opening day. I am curious. They've, they've not said anything it, on the website. It still just says closed for maintenance. Um, so I'm curious what your thoughts are on this one. Are they are they reimagining it? Are they reimagining it? Are they reimagining it? Are they demolishing it? Uh, would you be sad if it went? Would you love to see it revitalised? Um, interesting. They've certainly said nothing as far as I'm aware. I've not seen anything online. Even look for planning permission documents. Just there's nothing. So be curious to see when that park opens. I'll be there in May. Uh, there's an event going on in May with a group of us. Uh, so we'll see when I get there. Well, we'll find out before May, but I will see in May what has happened to this ride. Now looking overseas, we've got three parks that have announced some information to us in the last few days. Uh, the first one is over in Europa Park, and I've talked about this ride in a few videos already, and that is Voltron. It's set to be a fantastic ride. It looks stunning. Uh, they had their new trains delivered uh, last week, I believe, or very recently, uh, and they put some footage up of those trains. They look spectacular. They are super well themed. Um, I'm interested, it does look like, it's the same style as the, the normal Mac seats, with the kind of buckets behind you, but it looks like it's leather padded and I'm curious if that is genuinely padded or if that is like plastic effect to look like the leather uh, but they are stunning trains they look fantastic uh, and this ride is said to be on paper it looks like it's gonna be a fantastic ride it's this brand new model striker they've never done this before um, I'm not aware of them having this 4x4 train I know they do have some four across trains and typically they only have two seats across uh, and four deep. So it's definitely a new train style, but it's got seven inversions and I believe they've stated that it's gonna have 2.2 seconds of continuous weightlessness, which is definitely something I am keen to experience. If you've ever done either Velocicoaster or uh, Gotham Escape or even RMCs, uh, a lot of those have that kind of, that floater moment when you're upside down. 2.2 seconds, I believe, is the longest though, so I'm really curious to see. I'm hoping to get out to Germany this year. Nothing's confirmed yet, nothing's booked, but fingers crossed, later in the year, I can get a trip out there. I've never been to the park, and this definitely gives me an excuse to get out there. And the next one we had just yesterday, at the time of filming, uh, was that Cedar Point have shown us the three designs for the trains for Top Thrill 2. Now, we already saw one of these at IAPA, uh, the blue train, so we know what the trains themselves look like. They have now confirmed the three trains they've got. There's a black train, there's a blue train, and there's a sort of silvery white train. Um, I did ask on, on YouTube what you guys thought, and not surprisingly, the black train was the most popular, which I agree with. I think it looks spectacular. Um, as I've said in other videos before, never been to Cedar Point, so therefore never got on the previous Top Thrill Dragster, and I would love to get on this one. So who knows, at some point, probably not this year, Try and get myself out there and uh, and experience it firsthand. The last bit of news that we've had this week, and I suspect unless you've been living under a rock, you already know this because every major news outlet has covered this, every YouTube channel has covered this, everybody knows about this one, and that is they have released new footage uh, for Epic Universe over in Orlando. They have now confirmed the lands that we are going to have. We've got Dark Universe, we've got Super Mario Land, we've got the How to Drain the Dragons. Burke's Island, I think it's called. Uh, and then we've got the new Harry Potter Ministry of Magic. Um, and they've got these stunning portals going into all the different lands, which I think is a beautiful concept. Uh, we've obviously seen, I think, Bio Reconstructor doing a load of footage, like aerial footage and sharing information. Uh, so we've seen these being built, but seeing the kind of concept art of what they're gonna look like at the end, I think it's gonna be absolutely beautiful. Um, it will be in Universal in four weeks time. Clearly this won't be ready, because uh, it's a 2025 project, um, but I'm really curious to see how Disney responds to this. Uh, Universal are definitely up in their game. Obviously they've got this, uh, their eye on the UK, confirmed they bought some land and that they're interested. Doesn't mean we're gonna get that park, but I think everybody's hoping, keeping our fingers crossed, that we get a Universal in the UK. So yeah, the park they are opening over in Florida looks stunning. Definitely gonna raise the game. Uh, and gives us an excuse to get over there next year. There you go guys, that's that's a wrap up of quite a bit of information that we've had from various different parks, uh, or people that have gleaned information from kind of looking at the parks during close season to the parks themselves officially telling us stuff. I've been Chris, you've been watching Coaster Dad, and I shall see you in the next one. Adios.